Well, morning, Dave. I mean, obviously, these are, are unprecedented times for, for any football club, really. So what measures are you guys taking to ensure players keep up their fitness level? Um, yeah, we've, like you say, they are unbelievable times. and It's not something we've ever really thought and we've not had a, a strategy in place. Um, so there's been a lot of very um, flexible thinking on behalf of the group and I'm, I'm quite lucky I work with some unbelievably talented um, individuals like within our sports science team, so Matt Reeves and Tom Joel, along with Glenn Driscoll, basically have, have formulated the sort of strategy and, and Matt Horton as well as has really implemented a number of programmes. So all of our players are following um, a significant sort of home programmes in terms of their, their fitness and their strength and conditioning. Uh, with the strength and conditioning teams of Mitch Willis and Pete Habersham really running that side of things for them. So as best as it can be, we're trying to trying to make the best out of a bad situation, if you like. Um, the players themselves have, have taken to it. It's quite novel at the moment. How long that lasts for, obviously. It, it needs a lot of flexibility in the system to be able to make sure um, that we can keep um, achieving the standards we have done so far. But, but it's, it's been a nice challenge for us, something a bit different, um, which also gives you a little bit of energy and a, a new bit of zest to it. Um, so all things, all things considered, they've done quite well in terms of the programming so far. How are you dealing with players that are returning from injury or, or have injuries currently? Because, it, again, from a mental side of things, that, that must be very difficult for those players as well as physically as well. Yeah, again, you know, I'm really fortunate. I'm, yeah, as, as a head of the department, uh, it makes my life much, much easier when I work with a, a group of people who are forward thinking and who embrace change. Um, so Simon Murphy and, and Gary Silk, the other two physios that work with me at the first team level, and then all of our, physio, our physios who work all the way throughout the academy are, are very, very flexible in the way that they work. So they've adapted the way that they interact with the players. So there's a lot of video messaging going on for any of the in, in, injured players that we're dealing with. Um, a lot of reinforcement of programming, all from a distance. We have to, you know, we have to go along with the government messages as well. Um, and, and physio, it's difficult because physio is like a hands-on practice, which is quite difficult when you're at the other end of a phone. But, you know, we can, we can, through having good relationships and a trust in those relationships, we can cope with that because the message is still there and we can still have the face-to-face -face contact, you know, from the video-related side of things. On our first team side, so, for example, we've, we've only really got a couple of players, both who are long-term injured, um, so they're ongoing with programmes, um, but they understand the, the limits that we can place on that, but... But because we've got the relationships with them and the communication pathways are still open, we can still do it. It just means we don't get to put our hands onto their legs whilst we're having them, if you like. Um, but, but yeah, it's been taxing. It's been difficult. It's also given us an opportunity to do different things that we, we haven't done in terms of the way we communicate, but also in terms of our planning. So because we have a little bit more time to ourselves, say, in the afternoons now, when we're not interacting with the players, we can... Um, evaluate really where we've been as a department and how we've addressed a number of the issues in terms of injury risks and management this year. Um, probably whereabouts we are at the moment in terms of that and whether we're happy with that. And it's allowing us really to start to plan for what will be the rest of this season, but also really move forward to thinking about what's it going to be like next year when we move into our new training facility um, and what sort of hurdles are we going to have to overcome there in terms of communication and, and uh, the, the pathways in terms of injury management at the club. So it's given us a, an opportunity really to actually take stock of where we are and where we'd like to be as well. Just finally, you touched upon it ever so slightly there. How important is it that people follow the government guidelines and stay at home? Yeah, I, I, can't, I really can't stress how important it is for everybody to follow these guidelines. The, um, and the guidance that the government are giving us. I, I don't envy the position that they're in um, to try and formulate this into a package that, that's acceptable to the, to the general public as a whole. But as someone who's worked in the NHS, NHS himself, um, I, I know how hard 
it can be at the best of times working in that environment. And I can only begin to imagine how stressful and, and anxious those people are going to be working within that environment. You know, when you're working in the front line in any industry and you're face to face with a, a family or a patient and you don't have the relative equipment or you don't have the answers even, it becomes really, really difficult. Um, we've had um, a lot of conversations between our staff and and our um, and our players as such, and we know that as a football club, Leicester City, you know, we're only we're yeah we're an organisation if you like, but we're part of of the bigger community in terms of Leicestershire, and we know that we need to try and support um, the NHS staff within Leicestershire as best as we can, and we're trying to formulate ways we can do that. But certainly the, the NHS staff um, who are currently working in the University Hospitals of Leicestershire, um, the, the Leicestershire Partnership Trust and, and all of the teams that are working really in the community, in GP practices um, and uh, occupational therapists, speech and language therapists, all the people that are still working to keep the NHS going, it's really important we support them. It's also important to know the even the private healthcare system within Leicestershire has changed as well, um, and that needs our support now as well. They've, you know, so the Spire Hospital in Leicester, uh, that's based in Oby and Nuffield over in Scraptoff, they've both been commandeered to come in line and help support the NHS services. So as well as the main hospitals in Leicester, the NHS ones, they're also being supplemented by the private health system, and it's really, really important, you know. We, we need to address the whole of this thing as a collective. We can't do it in isolation, pardon the pun, but we can't. We really, really need to get through this. And we will get through this, but we have to do it collectively. And we've got to be responsible in that. And by being responsible, we have to really follow the government's guidance as best we can. You know, we need to give the people working in the NHS, um, we need to give them their support, but we've got to give them a chance. And the only way we can really give them a chance is to follow those guidelines. You know, stay at home, protect the NHS, and that will save lives. All right, so my advice really would be try as best you can to stay at home and stay safe.